have to be going about our father's business. When, when they couldn't find him, where was he about his father's business? Mm -hmm. About his father's business. Uh, about his father's business. Stop it, babe. Tell me more. This is for me. Tell me more. So, so what you were saying earlier is that is that a lot of people saw Jesus, but they didn't identify. They didn't really see him. They, they didn't, didn't see him. him. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. Uh, they didn't really see him for who he was. Who was it that was at the the, the water? She saw him for who he was. She knew who he was. And after a while, she thought he was a prophet. But then after a while, when he started speaking, she, she started having ears to hear. She knew. She says, she said, I know who you are. Yeah. She knew. Mm -hmm. Did she not? Yeah. She went in the town. And she told. She told him. She told him about the man. who told him everything that that, that, that knew about her. And they all believed. Now there's a first woman preacher right there. <laughs> she heard from her head, so she can preach. <laughs> so. But it's the same way today. Not everybody has that true fellowship with Jesus Christ. Right. Anybody can say, oh, it's just like going to be on the day when they stand before him. Well, I knew. I knew. You know you did it. I don't even know who you are. Well, I cast out devils. I healed the sick, I, I made the blind see, but you didn't know me personally. Yeah. You didn't know me personally. Well, it's back to that fellowship. You said very few people said you're the Messiah. Fellowship. It's fellowship. So, so, so with the revelation who Christ is comes intimacy, because where there's intimacy, there's fellowship. And then that's when he knows you as you know him. Just as you know him, he knows you. It's an intimate relationship, just like if you're married, you become one. Yeah. It's an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. You become one with Him. You know Him. Mm -hmm. You know His thoughts. It's like, I've heard people say, well, how do you know He talks to you? Because I hear Him. They say, oh, well, do you hear Him, you know, audibly? Mm -hmm. Do you hear Him like I'm talking to you right now? No. I hear Him in the depths of my soul. Because there's a, there's a difference. I can hear stuff up here. But that's not that's not Jesus. That's either my intellect talking or me. That's that's me. Uh -huh. But when I hear the Lord speaking to me, I hear it in the depths. There's a deep your soul, your spirit man. Or a scripture that, comes to your remembrance. Yeah. And and there's a difference there. There's 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 just such a difference when you hear your heavenly father speaking to you inside of you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have that. They they don't I've had so many people ask me, how do you know? How, how do you hear that? It's there. If you have Jesus Christ living on the inside of you, it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. I know when I know when my Heavenly Father, when the Holy, when the Holy Spirit speaks to me and He's getting after me too. Mm -hmm. You know that. And sometimes it's a, little, it's a little tap on the hand, like, don't do that. I told you, don't do that. And you hear that. Mm -hmm. Then there's other things that, okay, gets a little harder. Now I got it right here. What I tell you, stop. Mm -hmm. Then you, then it really gets where you get in trouble, and you know that too, and you know from the beginning, because mm -hmm. you can hear it. And then once you get into that, you know, you keep going and you keep going, you go off the cliff, and then you know you're in trouble. And then what does he have to do? He has to come right back and clean uh, uh, you all up. Right, again. but but people who keep going off that cliff, they get outside of the fellowship of God, and they get lukewarm in that yeah, area, and God it, is calling them back to fellowship. Yeah. Yeah, and if you get too far out there, then you're way out there where you can't hear him anymore. And that's dangerous you because witness. you can get calloused. Yeah, and then you, then when he's calling you back and calling you back and you don't go, then that's that's danger zone. Because you said earlier, my danger sheep, zone. you said earlier, my sheep hear my voice and they follow. So if yeah. we don't hear his voice, we can't follow. No. This scripture here in First John chapter 2 verse 5 in the King James, it says, but... Who keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected, whereby whereby know you that we are in him. This is how you know that you're in him. His word means his rhema word. Yeah. That unction you talked about on the inside. If we can keep obedient true to that unction on the inside, the Bible says that, the, that, that truly the love of God is perfected in us. Yeah. That means he loves us. Yes. That means he only loves those genuinely, those who keep his word. 
Jesus said, if you keep my word, me and my father will make our abode mm -hmm. in abide you. Abide in you. Abide they in you. you. That in is you. the fellowship of the Son of God. Yep. So you're giving me revelations, honey, on an understanding on our, our fellowship with the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Hearing from God. Well, it's the same thing as in a, in a, I mean, in a marriage. And, and you are married to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're married to Him, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And when you love somebody and you really care about them, you don't want to hurt them. Yeah. So we don't want to hurt Jesus. We don't, when, I yeah, know when I sin, and I have sinned. I'm mm -hmm. not perfect. We all sin. Mm -hmm. I know that I've hurt Him. And it hurts me. See? I feel bad when I go out and I do something. I'm like, oh my gosh. I know He cries. I know He cries for us. Mm -hmm. And that hurts me. And it's like, then I don't, I don't want to do it again. Or when you say something, or you say something and you keep on and you yeah. end up in saying it, and then it's like, oh, okay, and you feel the Lord saying, yeah. all right, now. Yeah. Or you, and your words, your words are powerful. They hurt people. Mm -hmm. There's times, even in our own marriage, that we say things against each other. We say, mm -hmm. and then you sit there and you go, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. And you know you hurt the other person, and you ha if you don't even feel good inside yeah. until you go and, what do you and do? you make amends with them. Uh -huh. That's the same thing with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You don't feel right till you go and make amends and say, Daddy, I am sorry. Abba Father, and we can come to Him just like that and say, Abba Father, I am so sorry, and sit on His lap mm -hmm. and give Him hugs and kisses mm -hmm. and ask for forgiveness, and He'll forgive us like that. And that's found in First John, the First John chapter one verse seven. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another, mm -hmm. and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all yep. our righteousness. Yep. That means if we have betrayal and bitterness against each other, we betray our relationship. Man, this Bible says if you walk in the light, you, not only do you have fellowship with one another, but because you're restored back to that fellowship, then the blood will cleanse you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the blood won't cleanse you because the Bible says if you have an odd out against your brother, leave your gift at the altar and then go yeah. and get it right. And then the blood will cleanse you. That's uh, why he says be quick to repent. Yeah. Be quick. Mm -hmm. when, when you have your little, with your husband or your wife, be quick to say, you know what, I'm sorry. Get back in that. Yeah. Don't even let the sun go down. On your anger. Because when you go to sleep at nighttime, if you're... You don't want to wait. You don't want to go to sleep with that poison in your spirit. No, because it, it sits there, and and that's an open door for the enemy to give you bad dreams, mm -hmm. and start saying stuff to you. So in the morning, you start right back to where you were before. So it's better to just get it right. You know you love each other. You know you're gonna be with each other. You might as well just say I'm sorry, make up love, so, and go on because it's only the enemy, anyways. Mm -hmm. That comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yep. We don't fight against each other. We're not when we fight. Mm -hmm. We're not fighting against each other. And he wants to make us become false witnesses and be uh, in bitterness and, and be uh, troublesome against each other and not be for each other and in bitterness and hatred toward each other, not talking toward each other. He wants to make us a false witness. And mm -hmm. the Bible says that a false witness will pour out lies. Mm -hmm. We'll begin to pour out lies. We'll begin to be deception, mm -hmm. saying this about each other, yep. what we're not. Saying, yep. saying what we are instead of, you know, when yep. we're really not or whatever it is. So, yeah. But, yeah. So, that's good today. I mean, I really feel... And sometimes I believe that we do have little spats just so we can get into this again. Because it's like you said, it always comes after something has happened. The shift comes after the attack. Mm -hmm. and, it, yeah. and it shifts us into where we need to be. And so, actually, in some ways, the enemy helps us out in some ways. And I well, believe he does anyways. Well, the enemy, God uses the enemy. I mean, he doesn't really help us out, but no, you know what I, I mean. I see it's what just, you're saying. Of course, you got to be careful how you do say that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, no, you're right. But but really God's going to use the enemy to bless us. And well, Psalm, Psalm 23rd chapter makes that very clear. Thou hast prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemy. So the very thing that, when the enemy's coming in and attacking, mm -hmm. that's how you know God is aiming for something that, He's aiming at a blessing in your life. Well, the way I've always said it is what the enemy does for harm, God will always turn it around for his glory. Well, that's so what he's that's doing. that's why I say God will always turn that around for his glory. Well, that's what he's doing because because when the Bible says that thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy, the area that the devil's attacking you in is the area that God's getting ready to bless you in. If God is attacking your marriage of God, I'm sorry, if the devil's attacking the fellowship with your wife 
and you know that you two have fellowship in the Lord together, that means, you know, you need to just keep on praying and pressing that, that your relationship is about to continually be blessed. See, when the enemy came in, when the Bible said when the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the enemy came in like a flood, mm -hmm. the spirit lifted up a standard. Yep. That's a shift, another dimension taking place. Yep. So a lot of times before a fresh dimension of God's presence comes in, you'll see a, another wave of the enemy come in first. Yep. And that's found in seventh Psalm 27 chapter. You can read all about it there. And when we see the enemy coming in, we have to look into the with Psalm 1, 121 says, I look into the hills and once cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which 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 made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. Even though the enemy is coming in so strong, it seems like my foot's about to be moved by the enemy. <laughs> God will lift up a standard. Mm -hmm. So, but what I'm trying to say before I cut this off is that, is that when the enemy comes in like a flood, we need to be spirit conscious enough to say, okay, this ain't nothing but the devil. Mm -hmm. This is confirmation that the blessing is right on the other side. Right around the corner. Right around the corner. This is confirmation that God's going to add another piece of that puzzle he showed me and my wife uh, uh, 25 months or two years or five years yep. ago. Yep. And it's a hard thing to do because we're so human and these attacks come so strong all the time and, 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 and they actually birth the blessings of God in our lives. They actually push us. Uh, you know God's speeding up the process in your life when the devil's always working. So why am I saying this? To get our focus off of the attacks of the enemy onto the fellowship of the Son of God with each other. And actually we should be happy because it says if you don't have anything like that and the enemy's not coming against you, you better be you better be careful there. Because mm. you you know if you're if you're over there with the enemy, then he's not gonna even bother you. Yeah, exactly. So you must be doing something right yeah, if you're you having yeah. all this stuff come against if you. If you ain't got no kind of you're spiritual on the right track. You, you ever hear them say when I was in high school, I had the best, it was, a, it was the hardest time of my life, but yet it was the best time of my mm -hmm. life? That's how it is with Christ. Yep. We have the best marriage, I think, that anyone could have in the Lord. We have the greatest marriage. It's the first time I've been married. That was the best time of my life. But at the same time, it's been the hardest time of my life. Oh, yeah. Because see, there is a there is a fiery persecution of of trials and tri uh, trials and tribulations with the enemy that come to buffet you and refine you to that glorious fire that's on that marriage, that glorious presence of God's healing power that's touching us and blessing us all the time. Mm -hmm. You got to take the good with the bad. But see, all these attacks and trials and tribulations they mature you to enjoy what God is preparing in the valley. I'm sorry, in the mountaintop. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yes. See, marriage ain't for anyone. Oh, Jesus. Marriage is for grown folks. And I don't mean physical, physically grown folks. Marriage is for spiritually grown folks in the Lord. Mm -hmm. People whose character is groomed with the presence of Christ. Oh, Jesus. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, God wants to groom your God wants to groom your character, your earthly character with the anointing of God's presence. That so when you speak, you emulate the very presence of God's voice that comes out of your mouth, the breath of God. He wants you to walk like him, talk like him, act like him, and create like him long before he's going to bring Eve along. Yeah. Was not Adam doing that? With, was not God doing that with Adam? Uh, then all of a sudden, he brought the animals first and brought everything. Oh, shit, I'm about to shift here in the prophetic right now. I didn't have this on my notes. Did not God take Adam uh, and, 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 and bring about all the animals and everything and bring maturity? Uh, and, then, and then here come the woman. He was getting everything prepared. That's right. He got to get your character right, man, before that woman can come along. I'm not going to say you're going to be perfect in that marriage. I'm not going to say you're not going to be arguing and fighting. But if a blessing too soon in life can be a curse. If you, if, you, if, you, if you ain't ready, if you ain't ready, you dang sure ain't going to be ready when she comes. You're going to blow it. So there's been many nights I thought I done blew it. And if you would have sent her two years too soon, well, I would have really blown it. She two years ago? Oh, yeah, I would have blown this a long time ago. And I was anointed, too. But there was a few other things God had to sand off my character that ain't here no more. Oh, boy, let me tell you. Anyways, thank you, Lord.